Welcome back to P3. Today we're looking at unit 5.3 natural logarithms. Now we've already seen the graph of y equals e to the x and the graph of y equals ln x is the inverse of this. So it's a reflection in the line y equals x. And what you will notice is that the graph y equals ln x is only defined for positive values of x. It's only in this positive section of my graph. And since that ln x is the inverse of e to the power x, we can use this to help us solve problems. It's also worth noting what ln x is. ln x is log to the base e of x and is known as the natural log. Now, because we use it a lot, then it gets the short version of ln, l obviously for logs, and n for the natural log, so ln. Okay, but in full, it would be log the base e of x, or log of x to the base e. And finally, for the information that you need to know, e to the ln x is the same as ln e to the x, and that equals x. So e raised to the power of ln x would be x, and ln of e to the x is also x. I'll put a little bit about this at the end of the video in case anyone is just a little bit interested. Let's have a look at a couple of examples. So to solve this first one, e, e to the power x equals 8, we need to take the inverse. When we're solving problems to get to that x, we're always doing the inverse of things. And the inverse of e raised to the power x is taking the natural log of it. So in this case, I would take log, the natural log, ln, of both sides. I'm applying that inverse. Now the natural log of e to the x then would just become x. And that is then my final answer. Now I can simplify this a bit further. As if I think about 8 being 2 to the power 3 x equals 3 ln 2. So I could use that as my answer as well. Remember this is the rules from P2. So we have e to the ln x equals e to the 5. So that means that x equals e to the 5. On this one, ln e to the 3x plus 1 equals ln 9. That means 3x plus 1 equals ln 9. 3x equals minus 1 plus ln 9. Dividing by 3, minus 1 third plus 1 third ln 9. A couple of things worth pointing out about this one. When I take my plus 1 to the other side, I tend to leave it in front of my log because sometimes if you put it the other side of the log, it looks like it could be part of it and it can lead to some confusion. And then finally, I can use my rules of logs in P2 to simplify this one a little bit further. So nine is the same as three squared. And then use my rules of logs, I can bring the two down so it becomes two thirds and then three. Okay, alternatively, this could be written as minus one plus ln three over three, or ln three minus one over three. But I do like to close that bracket off to show that it's not part of the, the minus one is not part of the log. So for this one, I want to first get rid of my 5. So dividing by 5, I get ln x plus 2 equals 8 over 5. Then I get e ln x plus 2 equals e to the 8 fifths. So 
so x plus 2 equals e to the 8 over 5. So x equals e to the 8 over 5 minus 2. Alternatively, I could write e, x equals e to the 1.6, then minus 2. Now, example 5 is about noticing that this is actually a quadratic equation. So e to the power 2x, this is actually the same as e to the power x squared because of my rules of indices. So this actually means that I have a squared term, a single term, and then that constant. So I am looking at a quadratic. Now, if you don't feel comfortable solving these as they stand, it's nice to say use a different letter like y equals e to the x. What we then get is y squared minus 2y equals 8. y squared minus 2y minus 8 equals 0. Then this one is about solving. In this case, I can factorize it with 2 and 4 plus 2 and negative 4. That means that y equals negative 2 or y equals 4. And since y was e of x, e of x will equal negative 2 of x will equal 4. Now my solution on the left, e of x equals negative 2, this is impossible. Okay, e of x cannot be a negative value. If you think of the graph y equals e of x, y cannot be a negative value because it doesn't exist on that graph it's not defined for that so this one we can essentially then get rid of and we're only solving e of x equals 4. so taking logs of both sides here we end up with x equals ln 4 or we can write this as 2 ln 2. Now it's time for you guys to have a go at a few questions. As usual, the answers will be after them. And if you're finding these videos useful, hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. For this question, you've got to recognize that it's a quadratic. e to the 2x is the same as e to the x squared minus 3e e to the x plus 2 equals 0. That's what we're dealing with. Okay, so it's a quadratic to solve. Now, if you're not comfortable solving it with that e to the x, as it is, just let's say y equals e to the x, and then you have y squared minus 3y plus 2 equals 0. And then solving this as you solve any other kind of quadratic, so we get down to y equals 1 or y equals 2. Now I can replace y back with e to the x. And then I solve from here. So the first one should be quite easy. It's obvious that x is 0, but I'll do it in full. So we're doing this. But I could skip that middle step there. And the second one, and then e to the x equals ln 2. So x equals ln 2. I'll do 12 without using the substitution and I'll just do it uh, sped up.
Now, just to point out, at this point, e of x is always positive, so we need to discard this solution. So, if I raise to a power, I can then bring it down, multiply by that power, so this would become x ln e, and any log where it's the same base, remember that this is log to the base e of e, that will always equal 1. Therefore, we get 1 times x, so this one equals x. Now, showing this one, I could say let this equal y, take my natural logs of both sides, then deal with my power, so that would come down. So we get ln x multiplied by then ln e. ln e is just 1, so ln x equals ln y. Therefore, x must equal y. Therefore, if I look back in the beginning, I can rewrite that as e to the power ln equals x, as x is equal to y. So therefore, x is equal to both ln e to the x and e to the ln x.